Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Adipati Asen Ramawan And this is Unit 5 Animals and Human Language Communication We should first distinguish between specifically communicative signals and those which may be unintentionally informative signals Someone listening to you may become informed about you though you through a number of signals that you have in an in intentionally sent. She may note that you have a cold, you sneezed, that you aren't at ease, you shift, you shifted around in your seat and you are disorganized, non-matching socks, and you are from somewhere else. You have strange accent. However, when you use language to tell this person, I am one of the applicants for the vacant position of senior brain surgeon at the hospital, you are normally considered to be intentionally communicating something. Jadi sebenarnya komunikasi ini bisa dalam bentuk istilah-istilah yang kemungkinan orang lain tidak mengerti jadi komunikasi itu sangat penting untuk bisa menginformasikan orang lain apa yang ingin kita informasikan properties of human language while we tend to think to think of communication as the primary function of human language it is not a distinguished feature all creatures communicate in some way. However, we suspect that, that other creatures are not reflecting on the way they are communicate, communicate message or reviewing how they work or not. That is, one barking dog is probably not offering advice to another barking dog along lines of, hey, you should lower your bark to make it sound more menacing. They are not barking but barking. Humans are, cru- are, are clearly able to reflect on language with it, its uses. This is reflex- reflexivity, the property of reflexiv- reflexivity or reflexivitiveness accounts for the fact that we can use language to think and talk about language itself. Making it, making it one of the distinguished feature of human language. Jadi sebenarnya uh, komunikasi dalam manusia itu tidak bukan hal yang baru. Karena semua hewan, semua semua makhluk hidup mempunyai cara mereka sendiri untuk berkomunikasi. Tetapi dengan arti artinya yang tidak bisa kita tidak bisa kita artikan, tapi mereka tetap ber, berkomunikasi. Displacement. When your pet when your pet cat cat comes home and stands at your feet calling meow, you're likely to understand this message as relating to immediate time and place. If you're if you ask your cat where it has been or where it's up to, you'll probably get the same meow response. Animal communication seems to be designed exclusive, exclusively for this moment, here and now. It cannot effectively be used to relate events that are far removed in time and place. When your, dog's, when your dog says grr, it means grr right now because dog don't seem to be capable of communicating girl last night over in the park. In contrast, human language users are normally capable of produ- producing message equivalent to girl 
last night over in the park and then going to say in fact I will be going tomorrow for some more humans can refer to past and future time this property of human language is called displacement we could look at the communication a small exception because it seems to have some ver version of displacement for example when a honeybee finds a source of nectar and returns to the beehive he can perform a complex dance routine to communicate to the other bees the location of this nectar depending on the type of dance jadi sebenarnya kita bisa memahami cara cara hewan-hewan peliharaan atau makhluk hidup lainnya hewan-hewan lainnya kita bisa memahami apa maksud mereka dengan pemahaman kita sendiri jadi kita bisa mempelajari cara mereka berkomunikasi tapi kita tidak bisa menyuruh mereka berkomunikasi dengan cara kita tapi kita bisa mengajarkan mereka cara mengajarkan mereka kita bisa mempelajari cara mereka berkomunikasi bukan mereka yang mempelajari kita untuk berkomunikasi Uh, untuk mengikuti untuk mengikuti komunikasi cara berkomunikasi kita Arbi, arbitrariness it is generally the case that there is no natural connection between a ling linguistic form and its meaning the connection is quite arbitrary we can we can we cannot just look at the arabic word ya la ba and from its shape for example determine that it has a natural and obvious meaning any more than we can with English translation form dog the linguistic form has not has no natural or iconic relationship between with that hairy four-legged barking object out in the world the aspect of the rel relationship between linguistic sign and the object in the world is described in as arbitrariness of course you can play a game with words to make them appear to fit the idea or activity they indicate as shown in this word form a chance game however this type of game only emphasizes the arb arbitrariness of the connection that normally exists between a word and its meaning such as the word ball make make a ball shape fall the double l is falling small the font is small tall the t and the double a, double l is tall the wall is thick so it forms like a wall there are some words in language that sound that sound that seems to echo the sound of objects Or activities and hence seems to have a less arbitrary connection English examples are cuckoo crash slurp squelch or were weird I don't know what sound that sounds like but weird however these anatopoic words are relatively rare in human language jadi sebenarnya uh, bentuk dari uh, bentuk dari sebuah kata itu bisa merepresentasikan sebuah benda seperti tadi kata, kata ball bisa dibikin kayak ada bulatan gitu jadi kayak bola sama dengan wall dibikin formnya itu kayak tebal-tebal jadi kayak wall gini dan ada juga kata yang merepresentasikan bunyi tersebut echoing the sound of the word seperti slurp jadi slurp itu kayak minum gitu kayak slurp jadi kayak ada mengekoi sedikit sedikit suara dari kata tersebut seperti crash juga crash itu kayak menghantam sesuatu atau menghancurkan sesuatu kayak crash bunyi crash gitu. Pro 
productivity. Humans are continually creating new expressions and novel utterances by manipulating their linguistic resource to describe new objects and situations. This property is described as productivity or creativity or open endedness and understand that any human language is infinite. The communication systems of other creators are not like that. Cicadas have four signals to choose from and perfect monkeys have 36 vocal calls. Nor does it seem possible for creators to produce new signals for communicate novel experiences or events. The problem seems to be that big communication has a fixed set of signals for communicating location and they all relate to horizontal distance. The B cannot manipulate its communication system to create a new message indicating vertical distance. This limiting features of animal communication is described in terms of fixed reference. Each signal in the system is fixed as relating to a particular object or occasion. These signals are fixed in terms of their reference and cannot be manipulated. The human, given similar circumstances, is quite capable of creating a new signals. After initial surprise, perhaps by saying something never said before. Cultural transmission. While we may inherit physical features such as brown eyes and dark hair from our parents, we don't inherit their language. We acquire a language and a cultural with other speakers and not from parental genes. An infant born to Korean parents in Korea but a dupe and broke up from birth by English speakers in the United States will have physical characteristic inherited from her or his natural parents but will inevitably speak English. A kitten given comparable early experiences will produce meow regardless. This process where the language is passed on from one generation to the next is described as cultural transmission. It's clear that humans are born with some kind of predisposition to acquire a language in a general sense. However, we are not born with the ability to produce utterances in a specific Language such as English. We acquire our first language as children in a culture. The general pattern in animal communication is that creators are born with a set of specific signals that are produced instinctively. Human infants growing up in isolation produce no instinctive language. Cultural transmission of a specific language is crucial in the human acquisition process. Duality. Human language is organized at two levels or layers simultaneously. This process is called duality or double articulation. In speech production, we have a physical level at which we can produce a individual sounds like a N, B, N, I. As individual sounds, none of these discrete forms has any intrinsic meaning. So, at one level, we have distinct sounds and at another level, we have distinct meanings. Although your dog may be able to produce wolf, I'm happy to see you. It doesn't seem to do so on the basis of a distinct level of production combining the separate elements of W plus double O plus F. Talking to animals. If these properties of human language 
make it such a unique communication system quite different from the communication system of other creators then it would seem extremely unlikely that other creators would be able to understand it some humans however don't behave as if this is the case there is after all a lot of spoken language direct by humans to animals apparently under the impression that the animal follows what is being said the standard explanation is that the animal produces a particular behavior in response to a particular sound stimulus or noise but doesn't actually understand what the words and the noise mean after all we don't generally observe animals of one species learning to produce a signal of another species you could keep your horse and a field of course for years but it still won't say more simpanser and language the idea of raising a gem and a child together may seem like a nightmare but this is basically what was done in an early attempt to teach a simpanse to use human language in the 1930 to scientists report their experience of raising an infant simpanse together with their baby son the simpanse called gua was reported to be able to understand about a hundred words but didn't say any of them In retrospect, this was a remarkable achievement since it has become clear that non-human primates don't actually have a physical structure for culture which is suitable for articulating the sounds used in speech. Apes and gorillas can, like simpanse, communicate with a wide range of vocal cords, but they just can make human speech sounds. Washu, recognizing that a simpanse was a poor candidate for spoken language learning, another science couple, Beatrix and Alan Gardner, set out to teach a female simpanse called Washu to use a version of American Sign Language. Jadi uh, simpanse adalah uh, kandidat yang buruk untuk pembelajaran bahasa lisan. Matrix dan Alan Gardner mengajar seekor simpanse betina bernama Washu untuk menggunakan versi bahasa isyarat Amerika. Uh, Desain language has all the essential properties of human language and is and is learned by many commonly deaf children as their natural first language. Jadi uh, bahasa isyarat ini memiliki semua sifat esensial bahasa manusia dan dipelajari oleh banyak anak tunarungu bawaan sebagai bahasa pertama alami mereka. From the beginning, uh, the gardener and their research assistant raised Wasu like a human child in comfortable domestic environment. Sign language uh, was always used when Wasu was around, and she was encouraged to use sign, even her own incomplete baby version of the sign used by adult. In a period of three and a half years, since Wasu came to use sign for more than a hundred words. Even more impressive was Wasu a bit to take this form and combine them to a sentence. Some of the form appear to have been invention by Washu. Jadi, uh, sejak awal, Gardner dan asisten penelitiannya membesarkan Washu seperti anak manusia di lingkungan domestik yang nyaman. Bahasa isyarat selalu digunakan ketika Washu ada di sekitar dan Washu didorong untuk menggunakan syarat dalam kurun waktu tiga setengah tahun Washu menggunakan 
uh, Wasu mulai menggunakan uh, 100 kata Wa, Wasu mengambil bentuk-bentuk ini dan menggabungkannya untuk menghasilkan sebuah kalimat bahkan beberapa ada beberapa hadir uh, ciptaan wasu sendiri at the same time as wasu was learning sign language another simpanse was being taught by an endeavored primark to use a set of plastic safe for the purpose of communicating with humans dalam kurun waktu tiga setengah tahun wasu menggunakan uh, Wasu mulai menggunakan uh, 100 kata Wa, Wasu mengambil bentuk-bentuk ini Dan menggabungkannya untuk menghasilkan sebuah kalimat Bahkan beberapa Ada beberapa hadir uh, ciptaan Wasu sendiri At the same time as Wasu was learning sign language, another simpanse was being taught by an endeavored primark to use a set of plastic safe for the purpose of communicating with humans. Jadi ketika Wasu belajar bahasa syarat, ada simpanse lain yang diajari an and David primark untuk menggunakan satu set bahasa plastik untuk tujuan berkomunikasi dengan manusia and eh, simpansi itu bernama Sarah dan Lana Sa both oh, Sarah and Lana demonstrated an ability to use what look like word symbol and basic structure in ways that superficially resemble the use of language jadi eh, baik Sarah dan Lana itu menunjukkan kemampuan untuk menggunakan bahasa eh, menggunakan apa yang tampak seperti simbol kata dan struktur dasar dengan cara dengan secara dangkal menyerupai penggunaan bahasa jadi this is the only of the many argument that have been presented again the idea that the use of sign and symbol by this simpanse is similar to the use of language jadi ini hanya salah satu cara dari banyak argumen yang telah disajikan untuk menentang gagasan bahwa penggunaan tanda dan simbol oleh simpanse ini mirip dengan penggunaan bahasa uh, well so savage rombak pas attempting to train a bonobo Uh, pick me simpanse called Matata how to use a symbol of your kiss Matata adopted baby Kanza, Kanzi was always with her jadi ketika Su Savage Rombok mencoba melatih Abonobo uh, simpanse kerdil yang uh, yang sebut mata tak uh, bagaimana menggunakan simbol yarkis mata tak diadopsi bayi kanzi selalu bersamanya Ter, uh, there's a difference there is a difference underlying the two years of communicative activity The capacity to develop a highly complex system of sound and structure plus a set of computational procedure that will allow the child to produce extended discourse containing a potential infinite number of novel utterance. No other creature has been absurd using language uh, in this sense. It is in this more fundamental or abstract sense that we say that language is uniquely human. Jadi, bagaimanapun juga ada perbedaan yang mendasari aktivitas komunikatif anak 2 tahun adalah kemampuan untuk mengembangkan sistem suara dan struktur yang sangat kompleks ditambah 
serangkaian prosedur komputasi uh, yang memungkinkan anak untuk menghasilkan diskurs panjang yang berisi potensi ucapan baru yang tidak terbatas. Ini tidak ada makhluk lain yang telah diamati menggunakan bahasa. Dalam pengertian ini, yang lebih mendasar atau abstrak, inilah eh, maka itu kita katakan bahasa itu uniknya manusia. Nah, thank you.